But on so many issues, our regular uh, weekly guest, Stephen Yates, is a foreign policy expert with the D.C. International Advisory. You can find them online at dciadvisory.org. And uh, also former advisor to former VP Dick Cheney. Stephen, good afternoon to you. Hi, David. Good to be with you. Uh, I, it is. It's always good to speak with you. And thanks so much for your time, as always. This story, uh, PRISM, NSA, uh, and then Edward Snowden, the very curious case of Edward Snowden. The I, I, I think it's safe to say that everyone is happy that we know what the NSA has been doing. We know about the surveillance because at first we were all told that we were wearing tinfoil hats. In my perspective, I think it's good that we know. But at the same time, there seems to be a lot of really curious instances in the case of this particular whistleblower. And what I wanted to ask you about in particular, just to start it all off with, Snowden uh, is in Hong Kong. Well, at least that he says. He was in Hawaii, based in Hawaii, said he wanted to seek asylum in Iceland, and then ends up going to Hong Kong. Now, there's a lot of debate as to why he chose Hong Kong. Is it because, you know, some people say, well, it's a, it's a totally free city and they're so free, it's almost freer than America. Uh, which seems weird because it's still part of China. Um, And then, of course, there's this extradition agreement that we do not have with Hong Kong. What are your theories to this? What do you make of this? Do you find it as curious as I do? Well, I find the whole thing curious. Number one, uh, I I spent the first five years of my career at NSA, and I spent five years in the White House among the top consumers of NSA reporting. I don't know everything about what they do, but I know a hell of a lot more than this Yahoo did. (laughs) <laughs> and a lot more than his journalist collaborator, Greenwald, who's a lefty activist. Uh, so I have enormous questions about the credibility of either of the two primary actors involved, but I have no question about the validity of the concern about what current programs are uh, with regard to sensitive information, data gathering, data mining, and all of that. In the wake of the IRS scandal, you can't help but have trust questions. But Hong Kong does have an extradition treaty with the United States. Yeah. Hong Kong is a part of the People's Republic of China, probably the premier surveillance state on the planet. This guy has to be among the stupidest humans I've ever heard of. <laughs> well, that and that's the thing, because even though there's sort of, what is it, like an experimental quasi independent sovereignty that they have. I mean, it's still China. I mean, come on. I mean, it's it is still China. Yeah. They do have what they call a high degree of autonomy. It's one country, two systems. There's a lot of jargon that applies. But I don't think that Beijing wants anything to do with this guy. Number one, they probably have better intelligence on Americans than this guy would offer, because sadly, we've let down our defenses on them. Uh, and B, they're not going to interfere with Hong Kong's legal obligation for extradition. Uh, over this. I just don't see what they would possibly gain. I mean, they're harvesting things through cyber and a lot of things going on in our territory. This guy, for their money, is is basically a lot of pain with no gain. Is there the possibility, now this says, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but at the same time, there seems to, why Hong Kong? Why would he, is it, I, I just simply can't believe that he's He's that stupid. Is there does this have something to do perhaps with because this all happens the same time. Chinese leadership in the United States meeting with the president. They've been sort of going back and forth with us, arguing, debating on on hacking, so on and so forth. Well, you guys did it to us. Um, There's a, a little bit of, you know, we have individuals in this country a little angry about the Iraqi oil situation going to China. Is that. It, he's not working with China. Let's just ask it. Is is this guy just like a front for someone that leaked this information out? Is he being that he's in Hong Kong? Is you know, do they know what he knows now? Well, I I would never completely exclude the possibility that he's just an idiot. Uh, there there are lots of those on the planet, and he could be among one of their leading examples. Uh, the guy that's working with him is an idiot, a nine eleven truther, a whole bunch of other wacky stuff. To me, at least at least in my eyes. Uh, but why Hong Kong? Uh, to a simple-minded person, they might say, well, this is one place in the world that is close relatively to Hawaii, that has a lot of international flight connections, uh, and if he's just looking for a place to get out of the United States but then figure out his onward moves, maybe someone in a rush thought this is a place that's transportation-wise convenient. Uh, and maybe they just were too simple-minded to think, oh, this is, uh, you know, this is not actually being in the Chinese mainland. It's something separate. Uh, it is also 
uh, not entirely out of the realm of possibility that this was cooked up among people that did want to sort of nuke the cyber discussions at that summit. It is very coincident that uh, that this this actually did brush a lot of that off. I had my doubts about how serious the Obama administration was going to be, and Obama himself, what I saw as a basically a show summit, was actually going to do on the subject, but it dominated the discourse mm-hmm. to the disadvantage of President Obama. I see that disadvantage mostly of his own making, however. A lot of these contradictions are because he declares a war on terror over abroad, but then wants to apply some of the most ex- aggressive, extraordinary measures at home on our own citizens. That's just completely out of balance. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I would agree with that. This Is, is there a possibility that, uh, I mean, and I realize this is kind of me asking you to predict things, but um, that he would ever, is this is this going to be like a sort of a Julian Assange sort of situation where he never comes back to the U.S. to answer any questions and everything is fed through Glenn Greenwald, who I am myself always suspicious of Greenwald, but at the same time, it, it leaves us, we're, we're in a weird spot, Stephen, where we can't trust the government, we can't trust what comes up from Greenwald. What can you trust in this situation? Nothing. Well, you can trust your own common sense and you can trust whatever range of people you have access to have real experience with these things. Uh, And, you know, there's always the dictum that you can trust no one. Uh, But, uh, you know, reality is that as much as I dislike these guys and I don't trust them as far as I could throw them, uh, Pandora's box has been opened. And there is some truth to the notion that the government possesses, gathers, and can go back and analyze a whole bunch of information. The technology has exploded in the last 10 years. There are things that the government is capable of doing today that couldn't even be conceived of in the immediate aftermath of 9-11 when we were operating under emergency circumstances and people had a greater tolerance for this privacy versus security decision. We're 10 plus years past that. The balance is different now. It needs adjustment, but the capabilities of our government have exploded in this regard. Uh, and so I think there has to be some trust or at least pressure on our elected officials to revisit these things. I support core concepts behind the Patriot Act, but I think that all of the tools that were put in place post-9-11 need to be reviewed. There is no reason people should think it was it was sort of the tablets coming down from Sinai at that time. These things need to be reviewed and adjusted, and we need to have the debate. The particulars that he alleges it is just not possible that someone, a 29-year-old contractor in Hawaii, can access the information he said he could and do the things he said he could do. Those were lies. The truth is the government is aggressively gathering information, has a lot of these capabilities, and it needs to be debated and probably put back in a box somewhat. Do you think that PRISM has been successful in preventing anything? There was a claim that it may have prevented something back from 2009, but then that uh, there was an article in the Daily Caller that discussed how really that came because of uh, different intelligence completely unrelated to what PRISM could gather. There, it, it just seems that the government would make a better case, which I still wouldn't agree with, that if they were able to show examples of anything that had been thwarted, but it doesn't seem that they can. Is this even Is it even successful or... I I think that we have to be careful not to get tripped up too much on specific programs because uh, just because some 29-year-old wacko, in my mind, got some some PowerPoint slides doesn't mean that's an entire program. It also doesn't mean it's a program that's active. It could have been a program that's being talked about and planned for. Uh, And clearly members who are cleared to be briefed on these things have said, no, we haven't been briefed on anything that approaches the scope that's being talked about in public today. So those are those are red flags to me. Not everyone lies when asked about these programs, that there's at least some degree of truth that we don't have our handle on. And even people with real responsibility for these things don't have their handle on yet. Right. But it doesn't stop us from being able to say we know whether it's the IRS, NSA, or any other entity of government, there's a trust issue now. And they are able to store enormous amounts of information on us now. And we don't really have 21st century or this decade kinds of standards in place. And I think that the country has much, much more of a libertarian tendency today than it did even just a few years ago. And that has to be factored into the balance that our leaders are governed by. Last quick question for you, Stephen. If all of this information is being gathered into a database by the NSA and everything that we've heard, everything that we've read about it is true, wouldn't that make even an, wouldn't that open a new vulnerable front for the United States and that China could essentially hack all of that information? Anyone could. 
And it also puts us way beyond any territory the founders could have envisioned or approved of. We essentially, I think, would need somewhat of a new constitution. Uh, so many of our basic rights are vulnerable in this kind of an environment without stronger controls. Oh, boy. There's this a lot of moving pieces in this. Stephen, I so appreciate your uh, unique perspective in this. Thanks so much for your time today and going over this with us. Thank you, Dana. Right, take care. Take Folks, care. you can find uh, Stephen Yates at DCIAdvisory.org, uh, and I believe he's on Twitter at that same handle.